Hi, I'm Michael. Keep watching and I'm going to tell you how you might be able to win this box of gloves. So right now I'm working on my next video, which has to do with this box of 8mm film. I'm trying to design a frame by frame scanner for all this old film. It's been a challenging project and it's taking longer than expected to get that video out. But in the meantime, I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's a global pandemic going on. And so gloves and some other 3D printer supplies are virtually impossible to purchase at the moment. So I'm gonna share three quick tips for printing during the pandemic. As you probably know, right now it's pretty hard to buy nitrile gloves, paper towels, or alcohol. Stores are completely out, and for example, Amazon says gloves will be delivered in about two months. So I wanna share a quick tip for each of those items. Some of these tips you might already know, and one of them has been disputed, but let's get to it. When I resin 3D print, I go through a lot of paper towels, and the shelves are empty. The target in my town told me that they get a small supply of paper towels and toilet paper first thing every morning. If you stand in line 15 minutes before opening, you might be able to get some. But another tip is going to the automotive supply store. They have the blue paper towels like the Scott Shop Originals. I went there yesterday and they do have them in stock, and actually they work even better than the regular paper towels for cleaning up resin drips and such. They are a little bit more expensive than regular paper towels, and the rolls are on the small side. This roll has 55 sheets and was about $4. Compare that to this double paper towel roll which you can get for about $2. IPA is another item that's impossible to buy. I can't take credit for this first suggestion. Uncle Jesse has a video where he tests Simple Green and Mean Green to clean parts in an ultrasonic cleaner. Check out his video, the link is in the description. I'm pretty low on IPA, I only have two bottles left. I'm trying the Mean Green at the moment. I'm not sure how well it's cleaning on its own. I probably should get an ultrasonic cleaner, but meanwhile, I'm just soaking and scrubbing with a sponge. It's a little foamy and it can be difficult to find small parts in the bottom of the tub because it's so dark green. But it's true that the fumes are milder than the IPA. Meanwhile, I have also been recycling IPA. I showed this tip in my video on handling resin. I put the dirty IPA in a container and stick it out in the sun. Then let it settle and pour the cleanish IPA off the top. Well, since I made that video, I've had some really dirty IPA and it just made a solid blob. Barely any IPA would pour out at all. But here's the thing, this blob is actually hollow and there is IPA inside it. Pop the blob with your scraper or something, watch out because it can squirt out a little bit and then you can pour the IPA out. It doesn't completely purify it, but I've been using this jar of dirty IPA to clean out my vat over and over again. Nothing works quite as well as IPA for that task. Pour it in, pour it out, sit it in the sun, let it settle, pop the blob and repeat. To dispose of the blob, I get as much IPA out as I can and then pour the blob out onto a paper plate. Let that cure and dry out in the sun, then toss it in the trash. Okay, now for the gloves tip and then how to enter to win this box of 200 nitrile gloves. If you're on your last box of gloves like I was, maybe you feel like you need to make them last as long as possible. And before COVID, I would go through several gloves on each print. But what if it's six months before we can easily buy gloves again? Well, I have a suggestion. But before I get into it, I have to offer a disclaimer. I'm not a chemical engineer. I'm not a scientist. I'm a dude on YouTube trying to figure out the safest way available at the moment to make my gloves last. I offered this advice already on a Facebook group and someone disagreed with me kind of strongly. So let's get on with the tip and then I'll offer his counterpoint just for good measure. My idea was to reuse the nitrile gloves, but that's difficult when they get so messy. So I bought a bag of these kitchen cleaning gloves from Home Depot. When I was there last week, they were readily available. I got this pack of five pairs for about $10. I first put on the nitrile gloves, then I put on the kitchen gloves over top of that. The outer glove isn't rated to protect you from the chemicals in the resin, but nonetheless, the inner glove should still protect you and it stays dry because no liquid gets through the thick kitchen glove. If I get resin on the outer glove, I slosh it around in IPA and then wipe it down with a paper towel. When I'm done, I use a paper towel to take off the outer gloves and then I take off the inner gloves. 
This is a little gross, but when you take the inner nitro glove off, they will be sweaty and important. They'll be inside out. Set them aside and let them dry. Later when I need to use them again, I turn them right side out and I reuse them. Again, putting the yellow kitchen gloves on on top of them. In my opinion, it's much easier to clean the outside of the thicker kitchen glove than the thin nitro glove. My thought was that the two ply would be even safer. No liquid is getting in, I can tell you that much, but to be fair, I wanna share the counterpoint as well. So here's what was said online about my idea. Don't follow that advice. Then he went on to explain that even the nitro glove only protects you for a matter of minutes and therefore shouldn't be worn twice and that the kitchen glove offers no protection at all from the monomers in the resin. Basically, his bottom line advice is that you should never use a glove twice and that if you run out of gloves, you should just stop 3D printing. So you have been warned. While I have to respect the man for sharing what he knows and offering a warning, I mean, we're all just trying to figure this stuff out. And like I said, I'm not a chemical engineer, so what do I know? The whole dangers of resin thing seems to be a hot topic in our community. Some people act like it's anthrax, other people act like it's no big deal. I tend to be somewhere in the middle. I have a reasonable respect for it, but I also feel that if I take some reasonable precautions, I'm protecting myself from 95% of the dangers. So I do have a rebuttal and feel free to leave comments on either side of the argument. Just keep them civil. I will delete any comments that get out of line. So my first rebuttal is this. As I pointed out in my video on resin handling tips, I divide 3D printing tasks into low and high risk activities. And what I mean by risk is the risk of getting resin all over your gloves. Only one activity made the list in the high risk category, and that is taking parts off the build plate. When doing that, in my experience, you're going to get resin all over your gloves. But if you're not doing that task, honestly, the gloves are there mostly as a safeguard, just like the eyewear. It's a protection in case you get a little resin on your gloves. So a happy medium would be to do the double glove reuse thing when doing the low risk activities and use just the nitro gloves when you're removing parts from the build plate and then dispose of them. And my second point is this, if you're down to your last few pairs of gloves, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stop 3D printing? Or are you going to just not wear any protection at all? Or are you gonna use whatever level of protection you can find? Seems like some protection is better than no protection. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. But I will say this, if you are gonna reuse gloves, at least do this kitchen glove thing to offer a little extra protection. Or you could win this box of gloves. And with 200 gloves, you'll be protected for a long time. All you have to do to enter is subscribe and leave a comment. You gotta do both. The comment can be anything, just write glove raffle if you want. The contest slash raffle details are in the description, so check there to see how and when the winner will be picked. Or if you're watching this video a year from now, it'll just say that the contest is over. So that's it, subscribe and leave a comment and you might win a box of gloves. Plus, if you subscribe, you won't miss anything. And I have some interesting projects coming up, like this eight millimeter film scanner project. It's a big one, so it might take a couple videos to complete. Okay, thanks for watching.